welcome arisen. This video is for you if you are just starting out and are not yet familiar with all those little details of Dragon's Dogma. Let's get through a few things you should know and of course you will find a video to every point on this list right here on my channel. As soon as you get to the military encampment you will have a chance to create your own pawn. This one is different from the other ones in that he levels with you and learns from you. Meaning he copies your playstyle. This manifests itself in so-called inclinations that determine how effective your pawn fights. In addition to that he gathers knowledge about enemies he fights. So he uses the right element, know how to climb and so on. In short, he starts out dumb but can become incredibly helpful later on. In Dragon's Dogma you have four resources to improve your character. The most yeah, obvious great. is experience, which lets you level up. Yeah. But there is also discipline, a sort of currency that lets you buy abilities at your trainer. You get both just by defeating enemies. Gold and Rift Crystals are currencies to buy stuff. Gold is self-explanatory. But Rift Crystals are a bit more complicated. There are a lot of different ways to obtain them and you always have too little of them. They are mainly used on Bitter Black Isle to purify items. More on that later. Every class called Vocations here have different steps that are applied when leveling up. Strider, for example, is very balanced, while an assassin gets more strength than others, rangers more stamina and sorcerers more magic. This often leads players to plan their level ups to get specific stats for the endgame. This can be very beneficial, but is by no means necessary. Even the quote unquote worst build can manage every bit of content in this game. And if you are a new player, min-maxing can harm your fun more than it benefits. There are nine vocations in Dragon's Dogma. The three you start out, Fighter, Strider and Mage. Then Warrior, Ranger and Sorcerer a bit later. And finally Assassin, Mystic Knight and Magic Archer. The last three are only for you and cannot be chosen for your pawn. Important to note is, you can switch to another vocation at any time. So don't shy away from experimentation. Test everything and find the playstyle that fits you the most. Vocations have their own levels from 1 to 9, at which you can buy augmentations for discipline points. The augments can only be unlocked through their respective vocations. But after unlocking are available for all vocations. This opens up completely new ways to play the game and can make a strong character even stronger. For example, Warriors get the Cloud Augmentation at level 9. This raises your total strength substantially and benefits every other melee focused vocation. Rank's Dogma is cut into game phases that changes the game world at certain points of the main story. While opening up new content, it also can block you from quests you haven't finished yet. So it can make sense to really explore before doing the next step in your main story. Bitter Black Isle is a former DLC that is now available for every copy of the game. And while you can exit it pretty early, I recommend doing it after you finish the base game. BBI is way harder than anything the base game has to offer and the rewards match that. Which can lead to the situation that you are way too strong for the base game and lose all the fun in it. This is also the place where you can purify cursed items for a chance of getting the best gear in the game. But again, if this is your first Judeo, just save it for later. The Black Cat in Grand Soren is a back alley dealer at which you can buy really good gear early on, as well as make forgeries for items you already possess. Most quests can be completed by turning in a forgery and keep the original item. So take a look and experiment. Fast travel opens up once you reach the pawn guild. You will have to place your own travel points up to a maximum of 10. There is a romance system which works different as you might expect. Every NPC in this game, yes every NPC, has a hidden affection meter. Every time to speak with them, do a quest for or with them, or give them a present. This meter rises. At a certain cutoff point, the game determines 
Which NPC has the highest value and choose that one as your beloved? If more than one has the same value, it will be that one you last talked to. So I hope this gave you a bit of understanding for the essential mechanics of Dragon's Dogma. And as always, stay strong and kill a dragon!